Hello, Bestie. I'm so excited to be back and on a solo episode with you. I know there are a little bit fewer farther between, but that's because I have so many incredible guests lined up to talk to you. But today I'm kind of interjecting myself <laughs> a little bit because I am still reeling from SuperZoo. If you're not familiar with what SuperZoo is, it's like the largest trade show in the pet industry. And while I have to admit, it's like three football fields long, the, the show floor, it's crazy. You cannot get through it in three days by any means. The majority of it, I will say, is like, is not for me. The majority of it is just not for me. And I have a feeling because you're here, it wouldn't be for you either because there's a small section <laughs> of natural products and brands. And I say it's small. I didn't even make it through the whole natural section in three days. Um, of course, I had a lot of friends to stop and meet up with and appointments with different companies and different people to go to, but I didn't make it through even the natural section in three days. So to give you an idea of how big this is, oh my goodness, but getting to meet up with wonderful, wonderful people in the healthy pet space is always like invigorating and just makes me want to come back here and tell you all the things. But I have to kind of pick and choose because I can't tell you everything all at once. You would think I'm a crazy person. So I have two clips that I recorded at SuperZoo that I wanted to share with you today. One of them is with Green Juju. So Billy and Kelly uh, of Green Juju were kind enough to talk to me. And then I also have a clip from Carlton and Animal Biome. And the reason that I'm including this clip, well, I'll, I'll tell you at the time that I give you the clip from Carlton and Animal Biome. So let's start out with the clip of Billy and Kelly from Green Juju. So the reason I'm so excited about Green Juju, well, there's so many things. I, I truly, truly believe, and Kelly is just absolutely incredible, that the products that they put on the market, first of all, they're actual food. So even though a lot of their products are considered supplements, and that's kind of how Green Juju started out, was with supplements. Food just came out this year in 2020, I believe. Yeah, 2020, at least for me. I get everything late in Texas, y'all. I it, it comes to Texas last. I don't know what that is. It's, it's a distribution issue uh, because I think tex Texas has their own distribution and then like the East Coast and the West Coast have their own distributions. At any rate, I get everything late, <laughs> which isn't awesome for a content creator, but um, at least I know about things ahead of time because I try to stay on top of things. So what's really, really great about Green Juju Food and what I was saying about Kelly is that, that everything they put out is real food. Of course, that is to date. I can't, I don't see that changing, but even all of their supplements you know, I'm doing my little quote fingers, supplements are real food. They're whole food supplements. And that's how I work. That's how I treat my dog. Uh, you know, anytime something is going on, my first thought is what can I do with food? I try, I'm going to be honest. I try it with my cats. It's not as easy with my cats. Um, if I were to ever get a cat again, a kitten, I would absolutely start them off early with a raw food diet and exposing them to lots of different foods and lots of different things because that's the best way for cats um, to become accustomed to, uh, you know, being able to give them lots of different things and for them to accept lots of different things. It, it, it is not impossible with adult cats. I just, I, the, the season of life I'm in has not allowed me to get my cats quite all the way there. I'm working on it. I posted a reel about it the other day, you know, anyway. So, but that, that is when I'm working with client dogs. Oh my goodness. Like food, 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 food. That is the foundation. That is the, what we need to work on first. What can we accomplish? What can we help? What can we fix? What can we um, support with food? before we add any supplementation outside of food. So that's why 
all of the green juju products are so powerful and also why I'm so excited about their food. Now I, Billy has agreed to come back on the podcast and talk about the food. Um, I just with schedules haven't been able to make it work yet. Um, so I have this clip from super zoo where Billy is telling you about the food. So let me let him tell you about the food and then I'll come back and tell you why I'm so excited about it. All right, we've got Billy. So he was on the podcast like eight years ago, and we talked about the veggies, and we talked about the rice milk, but at that time, they didn't have the foods, so we're going to talk about the foods. Okay. Okay, so what have we got? Can you tell me one? Yes, so we have bison, rabbit with duck liver, <laughs> lamb, beef, pork, and goat. So the goat, pork, beef, Lamb and bison are all three ingredients from an allergy perspective. Um, it's really cool because when you make, when we were formulating the food, we wanted to do something that was totally different. And so what we did was we took the most nutrient dense foods, basically, which are heart, kidney, and liver, and we get 99% of the vitamins we need from those specific things, especially um, ki uh, kidney, but especially, especially liver, which is which is nature's multivitamin <laughs> this is kelly the owner of green juju the real the real green juju so going back to the food yes yes that's true uh, i'm glad that was off camera so going going back to the food so we have um but the great thing was once you formulate with such nutrient dense ingredients all you have to do is add we had to add a dark leafy green and kelp mainly for vitamin k1 and iodine but you know, for fiber and for other phytonutrients. And the only one that's four ingredients from an allergy perspective is our rabbit with duck liver recipe. Um, and so the whole point of this line is we cater to the most sensitive animals so we can, we can cater to every animal. So every dog and cat can find um, one of these, if they're sensitive, that will work for them. And then we do encourage because no one formula, no anything like that has the monopoly on nutrition. So we encourage finding a base and then, and then using some of our other products as well. Um, most animals don't get enough vegetables in terms of fiber and feeding those grains. Um, raw milk is always a favorite of mine, bison bone broth. So we formulated this kind of like as a system versus just being like, hey, go on this one food for it. And well, and another side note too, is if you look at, say, of the ones that are already out, because the lamb and the goat are not coming out until October, if you look at the beef, pork, and bison, they're essentially all the same calories and fat to protein ratio, so you don't really have to worry about switching your amount and you can rotate between those and just feed the same amount for each one of those proteins. The bison's only three calories fewer than both the uh, uh, pork and beef. So we make it easy to do the right thing. Oh, that's so awesome. So um, you can only pick one. What's your favorite? Ooh, that's a tough question. Let's ask Kelly that too. If, we, if you can only pick one of these foods, which one is your favorite? Any product, any green juju product. Any, that, oh. that even opens it up way more. I know. Well, I mean, you can only get one. It, my first thing that comes to my head, my heart is with the just greens because it's how it started and I love how it smells, I love what it's done for my dog and other dogs and I would make a perfume out of it and so that's where it goes. But I could I could probably have a longer list than that. But that's my number one. No, what's funny about that is I can say milk if I want to, but what's funny about that is my own dog, uh, in order to manage his just general health, especially digestive health, and also his allergies, the number one factor is what she's talking about, is the Just Greens, uh, Bailey's Blend, and Golden Blend in terms of um, really night and day from allergy season last year to this year, and that being in using a lot of those things, so honestly... That's what I would have answered because it's so, it hits so close to home. But otherwise, I'm going to go with milk because you told me not to. <laughs> so that's fine. Uh, no, raw milk is, it is true. It but never, it there, never plays by the rules. We still got two. There, 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 is a, there is a reason that you know, I love raw milk. Raw milk is just nature's most complete food and is a great addition to every single bowl and also it is a great addition you can combine what we're talking about even if you are feeding a processed diet doing whatever you can for instance 
feed the microbiome with the 200 plus probiotics in the goat milk and then you can feed it, feed those microbes with this wonderful uh, fiber set in all of these vegetables. She looks like she has something for you. You have another favorite. Okay, well if he gets two, you get two. Okay. Okay, so this is my other favorite. This is the bison green. Um, this is our whole food freeze dried top for yeah. bite, treat, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, it's all bison organs and dark leafy green vegetables. I love this because it's so. Oh no, there's a thing in there. Um, <laughs> because it's so. Uh, the organs are so palatable. Dogs love this, and then they get a lot of nutrients in it from the plants. So it's kind of like you can get them good nutrition without thinking about it. It's naturally in there. I love that. Thank you so much. <laughs> of course. And, and, and thank you, Billy. Yes. Oh, no problem. Okay, and just for you, my incredible listeners, I threw in the favorite green juju products for Billy and Kelly. Of course, no one ever follows the directions, myself included. So we got two from each of them, but um, you heard it here. So why am I so excited about the green juju foods? Well, two reasons. One is selfishly, this is the first freeze dried food I have tried with my dog that she actually ate. Literally every other freeze dried food I've tried with her, she has not even touched. She'll like smell it and walk away from it. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't know. Like it, I thought maybe it was just so different from her regular raw food that she didn't see it as food. But now seeing her eat, like happily eat the green juju freeze dried foods. So far, we've tried the rabbit and the beef, and she loves both of them. Um, so far, like everything I have given her from green juju, she has accepted. She's not a huge fan of the veggies. I'm not going to lie about that. Um, but I have found she accepts the freeze dried just greens a lot easier than the frozen, which of course I thaw. But um, she's accepting of the freeze dried greens a lot better. So that's what we're actually using currently in the green juju animal biome challenge is the freeze dried greens. So what is so incredible, and here's number two, what is so incredible about the foods that green juju is putting out is that they are incredibly, like the ingredient panel is so incredibly short. It is you know, the, whatever protein, the only one that differs as of right now, the rabbit has duck liver in it, but it's like, first of all, finding a single protein diet for dogs, let's be fair, a single pr protein diet for dogs is a little bit easier to find than for cats. It's very, very difficult for cats, which by the way, the, all of the green juju freeze dried foods, and they have announced they are coming out with, um, frozen raw as well. Um, that will be 2024. So all of them are balanced for both dog and cat. And the way you do that is by balancing for cat and then double checking and making sure everything works for dog. And they have done it. I don't know another brand that has done that. And it seems now that they have done it. And honestly, I, like I have had this thought for years, like, isn't that like, couldn't it be that easy? I can tell you many times I have bought raw food for my cats and they wouldn't eat it. And I ended up feeding it to my dog and I felt completely comfortable with it because I knew like any, any extra nutrients in there were more than likely going to be uh, water soluble. If she doesn't need it, her body's just gonna um, like pee it out. Right. So it, it has always worked out. I've always had this thought in my head, green juju has done it. But for dogs with allergies and sensitivities, this food is like, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself in my head, trying to figure out what I wanna say to you about this because the majority of client cases that I have, the majority of dogs that I, I am working with, that I have worked with over the past uh, year or so since I became a certified holistic pet health coach and now have my um, certification as a professional canine nutritionist, uh, which I'm super, super excited. You're the first ones to know about it. I haven't posted that anywhere. So um, all of the clients, all of their dogs that I have worked with, like across the board have allergies and sensitivities to food. 
This is primarily due to leaky gut, dysbiosis, intest intestinal permeability, whatever you prefer to call it. Leaky gut is like a hot buzzword now, so that's what most people are calling it. There are so many sensitivities that the only options that I'm finding for my clients as far as commercial foods that are they're able to feed their dogs without running into you know sensitivities that are showing up on we primarily use the glacier peak scan some people have already had nutri scans done whatever scan whatever testing that um you know the client is most comfortable with that's what i work with and i'm telling you the majority of dogs are sensitive to salmon blueberries and spinach so many other things that are like hot 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 like pet food companies are like oh everybody knows about you know omega-3s and fish oil so we all put salmon and salmon oil in the food now which is causing so many dogs to have sensitivities to salmon oil and same with blueberries same with spinach like they're they're creating sensitivities by adding these things to really, 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 really crappy food. And I, I'm, I apologize if that offends anybody. That's my opinion. So um, we have these foods that I, I'm, I'm looking and looking and looking and scouring, trying to find foods that are commercially available that X dog, A dog, B dog, Z dog, whoever can actually eat that doesn't have anything in it that pops up on their sensitivity list, it is really, really difficult to find. And inevitably, every single time, green juju is on that list. What, however short the list is, in fact, I was just doing one for um, a, a mentee who I, I am I, I'm mentoring through um, the Holistic Health Coaching Program yesterday, and I literally found two. I could only find two commercially available foods and that's great. You know what? Two is better than one, but I would ideally like to have at least three. I like to rotate proteins. I like to rotate brands. And so what else do we do? We have to cook and not everybody wants to cook. And I get that. And I also, or, or DIY raw, right? So cooking or DIY raw and not everybody wants to do either one of those. So finding a commercially available food is incredibly diff difficult. And before Green Juju came out with these foods this year, the list was that much shorter. So that's why I'm so excited about their foods, um, really, because it actually gives me another tool to be able to help and support my clients. Um, so with that, I also recently posted a reel about I started Kimberly, my dog, on the green juju microbiome challenge. What is that? And um, how does that lead into my next clip? <laughs> that's what that's what I'm going to talk about now. So the I, I did a an animal biome test on Kimberly. I think I sent the, the test off in January, got the results back maybe beginning of February this year. She had an imbalanced microbiome. I dug into that information, the research, what animal biome was providing to me all of the information. And what I found was that a lot, probably most, but a lot of raw fed dogs are deficient in fiber, which causes, um, can cause, um, uh, and, oh, oh goodness, why can't I talk? An imbalance in the gut microbiome. So Kimberly had a gut imbalance. And based on the bacteria that were present, that weren't present, yada, yada, it was due to a lack of fiber in her diet. Um, so at that time, I went out, like this was actually before I re recorded the podcast with Billy back in February. I went out and bought a ton of green juju. I bought all three of their veggie blends, the Just Greens, Bailey's Blend and Golden Blend. I bought the Bam's Beats. I bought um, the Lewis Turmeric. Um, and of course, Kim has been on goat's milk for years. So um, after talking to Billy, I pretty much have just completely 
like 100% all I buy is the green juju milk. But anyway, um, so life happened, things happened, stuff got going on. Um, Kim didn't love the veggies at the time. I, I think I may have told you guys, I know I posted about it, um, on, on social media that, uh, Kim went through a phase in late June through July where we had a lot of food aversion issues. I think a lot of that was due to anxiety, the fireworks. We had a ton of thunderstorms come through and it just, the anxiety messes with her gut. It messes with her digestive system. She doesn't feel good. She doesn't want to eat. She like a lot of things happened. We had a lot of food aversion issues going on. And then of course, life in general happened. So I didn't follow through with the microbiome challenge back when. So I just sent off a new sample to Animal Biome to get a baseline. The green juju challenge is to then feed 30 days of veggies from green juju. I'm doing the freeze dried just greens. And then we will retest and compare the two samples to see what happened. Now, there are different ways to get fiber in the diet. Veggies are one. Fur and feathers are another great way to get more fiber in the diet. Kim is not huge on uh, chewing things. She doesn't like bones. She doesn't like big chunks of anything. So I, I just, I didn't want to cause any more food aversion issues. I'm doing the veggies. And that of course allows me to be able to do the green juju microbiome challenge. So I will update you guys on that. Certainly if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you follow me on Instagram. Um, because that is where I'm posting about it and you get, can see the updates and you can see me adding the greens into her food every night. And, uh, uh, so that kind of leads me into my next clip. This is Carlton with Animal Biome, and he's telling me about how they came up with the 30 days. It's a short one-minute clip. Here we go. Hi. We're here with Animal Biome. Carlton. This is Carlton. So tell me what you just told me, Carlton. So I, when we first launched our company, Animal Biome, and we do microbiome testing, we were testing our dog's poop every day, and then we would try different things like diet or mm -hmm. supplement changes. And what we learned was that for a diet change to take effect in the microbiome, okay. you could test it every seven days, but you'd get noise. But after okay. 30 days, it starts to settle down, okay. and then you really have the result of the diet change in the microbiome. How many dogs? So we initially did it with one dog, but we've now done over 40 studies with uh, pet food and supplement companies, uh -huh. and we've tested it um, on a larger scale. I don't know the exact number, maybe a couple hundred at this point, uh -huh. and it's held true. Okay. So that's where the 30 days for the green juju challenge came. Exactly. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. So as you can tell, Animal Biome has done so much testing and they have figured out that they want to cut through the white noise. They want to see what actually is changing in the gut microbiome and 30 days is the sweet spot for that. So that is why the Green Juju Microbiome Challenge is 30 days. And that's what we're doing. So far, so good. It's been about a week. She has eaten her uh, greens with her meal every night so far. I'm going to knock on wood and <laughs> hopefully not jinx that. Um, something that I don't want to talk about too much because I don't want to jinx it. I want to make sure that she's good with her food, that she's eating her food. And I will say she has loved loved, loved. So far, we have tried the rabbit and the beef of the freeze-dried green juju uh, foods. She, she, she's, she loves them. And so I'm going to keep feeding them to her. I have a couple more proteins to try. Um, and then there, they have two more proteins that are going to be out in, I think, October, which for Texas probably means December. So we'll see <laughs> when I can get the other, the two new proteins, which I believe are the two new proteins are lamb and goat. And excited for those. They are both warming proteins. So to be coming out in the winter is a good time to try them. I certainly, with my, my Kimberly is, is a mix of earth and fire. So she definitely runs hot. Um, I wouldn't want to feed her lamb or goat during the summer. I, uh, if I can get it, 
get, keep your fingers crossed that I can get it in the winter and we can try them in the winter for her. Um, with that, I, I just, I'm still reeling from super zoo. I have so many people to follow up with and, um, get on the podcast for you guys. So with that, I'm going to end today's episode. I, I'm super excited about all of the things that are coming up in the healthy pet space and excited to be able to share them with you. So thank you so much for listening. Please, 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 if you have not already rated the podcast, please do so on whatever podcast app, Apple or Spotify um, that you're listening on. It really, really helps get this message out to more pet parents. And um, I need your help to do that. So Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, rest of your week. Please give your pets some extra love from me. Until next time, bye guys. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos in my online dog training, The Furry Family Coach. Just go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside.